everyone, and welcome to Silver Sunday this Sunday night on October the 9th, 2022, year of our Lord. How's everyone doing? Cold. Cold? Pete? I'm, cold I'm fine. Oh, we're on the <laughs> I'm doing good. Tommy, you all right? Oh, I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. We have with us tonight a special guest, the legend himself, Mr. Marv. Oh, uh, Tommy, you're going to ask the, the question, right? Uh, uh did you... Tommy has the very first question and 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 I can't introduce you properly until you've answered the question. I'm wasting so, no time. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to let Tommy go ahead and ask you the first All question. Right. Yeah, they Roland setting me up because we were uh Roland and I go bike riding and we were uh we were talking earlier today and I have heard your last name pronounced so many different ways. So, how do you Pronounce your last name correctly. <laughs> That's right. Wolfman. 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 All there right. That's what I said. I was because you, you hear so many different ways, and they're like, "What?" Excellent. It's not, it's There's a monster who's a wolf man. I'm just Wolfman. 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 After, now, what's, that what's, is what's, anyway. what is the origin of that name, Marv? Excuse me. What's the origin of that name? Like, uh, is it my parents? I don't know. No, so, I mean, you know, is it? Is it, is it, is it, is it doesn't sound like a. I mean, is it English, German, French? Do you know? Uh, I'm sure that's a very logical question to ask in a very limited time space, because <laughs> hundreds of hundreds of hours would have to be spent uh, before I can adequately answer that. Okay. <laughs> do, well, okay. So I guess my question would be: Do you know the answer to that? Yes, I, okay. I, I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> uh, well, um, there, is a, there is a reverb on oh. the sound, so I'm actually don't hear every word that you're saying, but there is a slight reverb uh, that's uh, that's coming. So I'm trying to hear it. So the uh, best thing to do on your side is um, speak a little slower. Okay. And um, not as loud. And hopefully, uh, you may be speaking at normal rate. I, uh, I have no idea, but uh, it's coming across with a reverb, so a slower gotcha. speed better. Um, if you happen to have earbuds or headphones, that might help. Um, but I will do my best to speak slowly. It's, it's, you you get us all excited. So um, <laughs> the the uh, so the the question was: Did do you? know the the origin of your last name no no okay <laughs> I don't think my parents knew it or my grandparents so wow uh if they did they never mentioned it interesting that's interesting well we're already getting comments here look at this hmm. uh vic uh he always says that bon sera. i think that's high in a foreign language i forget what it was Phil Leon says, hey, Silverline peeps. And then he says, Marv Wolfman, awesome. <laughs> uh, Jackson Rennick says, looking good, Marv. Uh, Retro Maniac James says, greetings, Roland, Marv, Peter, Thomas, and Chat. So, um, oh, so, uh, so, Marv, we're just going to pelt you with some questions. And one of the things that I would like to hear you talk briefly about is I remember way back when you were in the Malibu offices back in the early nineties, you had talked about, uh, and I don't remember the, the, the whole story, but I remember you speaking about when you and Lynn Ween were younger, the two of you would go to Jack Kirby's house and, and, and this would be in New York and hang out. That's true. Absolutely. So, okay. Uh, How did hey, that come about? Excuse me? How did that come about? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Jack lived, Jack and Roz, his wife, uh, lived in uh, on Long Island. And uh, Lynn lived in Long Island and I lived in Queens. Um, but uh, if you knew Jack or if you met Jack, you'd, you'd realize very quickly they sort of uh, became friends. And 
called up one time and said, can we come by? And this was long before fandom and long before all of that. So the fact that somebody actually liked and wanted to talk to a comic book creator was was a brand new concept and felt good <laughs> and uh, probably very reaffirming uh, in that world. Um, Jack said yes, and uh, Roz uh, said yes, I should say, and um, <laughs> because she was in charge of everything there. Uh, uh, she was upstairs, Jack was downstairs in his art studio drawing. And But before that, before Roz would let us go downstairs and speak to Jack, uh, we ha- uh, she had made lunch for us. And, um, <laughs> That's very so uh, we did, we went down, and you could not ask for a nicer time or a nicer person than both of them. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I only briefly got to uh, got to meet them um, when I when I moved out to California, um, just enough to be able to say you know hello kind of thing. Uh, we have Rob Davis joining us. Hey Rob, yeah, just tuning in for a couple of minutes, see what's going on. Yeah, very uh, good. We, we are just chatting with the legend himself. Uh, I got a couple more comments here. Uh, Vic says, I've been waiting for this since Roland said something about it last Sunday. So uh, gl- glad to hear you're, you're, you're tuning in, Vic. Bobby Westgood says, hello, big dummy. And hi, Thomas, the bike rider. <laughs> <laughs> Look, now he's including me. You're, you're following me. <laughs> Hyper Potato says, uh, howdy all legends two weeks in a row. Thank you, Mr. Wolfman, for being here. Pleasure. And uh, Vic says, uh, that's that's sweet, sweet story. Uh, Trusty Press said, uh, what up, what up? So, um, hmm. so you, you uh, how old were uh, roughly how old were you and Lynn when that was going on? Well, she probably someplace between 14 and 16, I would say, maybe a little bit uh, younger. I'm not sure, it's a so, long time ago, yeah. So, but, but but you were, but you were like teenagers. You weren't like college kids. No, I don't. I don't think it was during college. I think it was still teenagers. I could be wrong. It's, it, you say it's a very long time, and uh, I hadn't given it that sort of thought as to what how old I was or or anyone else at that particular point. But I think it was around there. Mm. Did, did, would you say that um, that time with Jack kind of uh, inspired you to to work in comics? Well, I, what happened was I remember because uh, I was publishing fanzines. So wait, wait a second, yeah, I was doing fanzines. So it may have been a little bit closer to sixteen or seventeen, um, and I had just come up with a character. Uh, and Jack at some point asked something to the effect of, do you want to do these things, uh, do comics or whatever else? And I said, yeah, and I came up with this character. He said, tell me about him, and I did. And within five minutes, he told me more about the character (laughs) than I had expected. Wow. Yeah, incredibly fertile imagination, and everything was perfect. I mean, literally, it was all all there. Uh, And... He didn't change it to his. He just made the one that I, the thing I came up with, so much better. Hmm. Yeah. Now, did did you ever get the uh, opportunity to work with Jack Kirby? I'm sorry. Did you did you ever have the opportunity to work with Jack Kirby? Yeah, but um, I'm sorry. Um, it's all right. When I was the editor in chief at Marvel. Uh, Jack, uh, I commissioned a lot of covers um, for from him. Um, and of course at DC, I had written the intros in all of his uh, uh, Fourth World books, the, the text oh. page. Okay, okay. Yeah. And, and of course you wrote the intro to My Own Demon's Tales, but you don't remember that. <laughs> 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 You'll have to you'll have to say it again. I'm sorry. I'm going to be. <laughs> it's okay. I I said uh, that you wrote the intro for Demon's Tales for me and Paul Pelletier and Tommy, but you don't remember that. <laughs> you are you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, well, that doesn't that doesn't mean we appreciate it any less because we appreciate it very much. Um, so so that's actually one of the questions that I wanted to ask. You mentioned Marvel editor uh, and chief. How did how did that come about? Because this would have been middle 70s. Right. Yeah. How did that come about? Um, essentially for uh, in in order you know, Roy, uh, after Stan um, went to publisher and all of that, that turned over to Roy. Mm. Roy uh, eventually decided that he took a trip out west and decided he didn't want to go back to New York. And um, <laughs> he left. Uh, the next person in line was Lem, and he he lasted about six, eight months. Yeah. Um, and then he left, and then I came in. Mm. So I was already editing the black and white horror magazines for Marvel. Right. So, so you were just the next person in line, is what you were saying. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it could have gone <laughs> on. They could have said, you're on the black and white magazines. We'll find someone else. But they just moved, uh, shifted me over from the magazine line to the comics line. Mm. Yeah. I, and which, of course, I was already writing for. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now that was before also uh, Marvel briefly went to writer editor. Uh, yeah. Well, that's because of Roy. Uh, Roy wanted to continue to edit his own books. And <laughs> Stan never had a problem with any of that. Uh, obviously, because Stan pretty much worked at home, except for maybe one or two days a week, um, and had no problem thinking. His view was. If you were good enough to be writing for Marvel and they kept you, you could you could handle your own you could edit your own material. Uh, we always okay. had um, an editorial staff to go over. Everybody should always have somebody looking over their work, make right. sure it's, make sure it's correct, make sure it's spelled right, make sure the stories work. So even though you're your own editor, somebody else was still going over the material, and it could have been several different people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and how long were you editor in chief, approximately? Well, I think a year or two, something like that. I've, uh, again, uh, I'm not positive. Um, it what happened was in my case, uh, Marvel was bought by a company called Cadence. Mm -hmm. um, and Cadence uh, turned my job from a creative job, editor-in-chief, working with the writers, to much more of a business job. And um, I really had no facility to do that sort of material. I, I couldn't care less about the business side of things. Right. But they wanted that. And so following Roy and Lynn, I made a deal where I could uh, uh, write and edit my own books and I, I I took off. Okay, okay. Um, now, did you did you did you take off to go to California as well? Excuse me. Did you take off and go to California as well? No, uh, I still lived in. Um, that was in the seventies. I was at Marvel, and I moved to California in eighty six. Oh, okay, okay. So that what that didn't come till later. No, I just meant that, you know, I work from home and I had an office there if I wanted it. And, you know, one day a week I may come into the office uh, uh, just to, you know, keep in touch with everybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, that, how did you so what, what was your what was your very first comic work? I know you said you did some fanzines, but what was your very first comic work? Um, Blackhawk. Blackhawk, okay. Yeah, sure, Blackhawk. Yeah. Huh. Um, what's your what What's your longest running? I guess Titans would be your the longest. Uh yeah, uh, the longest runs. Yeah, um, I was on Dracula for eight years, and I was on uh, Titans for I think sixteen. Wow. And I occasionally still write stories. I, I haven't written any of the entire team, but which I prefer not doing. Uh, but I have written, you know, recently Raven stories. I've written uh, uh, the individual characters. Right. Yeah. 
I saw, uh, I, I guess it's on your website that uh, you had a couple of pictures with some of the uh, some of the actors who have, who have played some of these characters. What what was that like getting to to meet some of those that characters that you had envisioned and? Oh, it was fun. You know, uh, it it I, I'm not starstruck in the slightest. After mm. all, I came up with those characters. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, they're playing characters that I wrote, so sometimes they're actually more enthusiastic. I like meeting them to make sure that they uh, understand the characters, at least as far as my stuff is concerned. Uh, they decide for a TV show or a movie or something like that if the character is going to be handled differently or how right. they're going to so, their view of what the live action or animated version of the characters are is is one hundred percent theirs, and they can or d cannot decide to follow through on anything I say. But I like to speak to them, and most of them want to speak to me to to understand the background of the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I'm not, as I say, I'm not really starstruck in any of those things because they're just saying words that I said that I wrote. So. <laughs> Uh, what would you say that uh, of the characters that you created and worked on, what would you say is the biggest surprise to see in a different medium? In other words, you, you see them on a, a game or animation or TV show and you go, huh, that's not the first character I would have imagined being there. No, the, uh, pro you know, there's so many that, um, you're surprised by, for instance, uh, the fact that Deathstroke has become such a big thing in so many versions of the Titans. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I saw him as a uh, as the villain, uh, so I thought he would not. He was not something that uh, the TV or the movies would pick up on. Uh, mm. but, you know, well, uh, Brother Blood is come is the major villain for next season of uh, Titans. Yeah. And I certainly never expected him. Wow. Um, uh, because that thing is is so steeped into religion and such, I never thought that they would uh, put that on TV. I have no idea the handling, but we'll right. see in November, I think, uh, the show premieres, uh, the wow. first season premieres. Yeah, cool. No, which, which is the one, uh, which character do you think is like, yeah, I expected that one, it's about time. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. Maybe Raven. Okay. okay. Strong character, uh, and I'm so happy that she's d done, and she's done very well on the time. Yeah. yeah. Now, I also uh, want to say, uh, if we ask you anything that's out of bounds. <laughs> they should have. Just, okay, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say, just tell us it's out of bounds. I'm not sorry. <laughs> I, I wanted to know, like, of, of of some of the characters that made it. Uh, uh, well, I had some other questions, but the ones that made it into the live action or the uh, the, uh, the 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 cartoons or the animated stuff, like which it's a two parter, I guess. Which ones did you go? Yeah, they got that one right, and they're still doing it right. And then which ones you go? Well, they just got that so wrong. And then, and then and then they're never going to get it right it, compared to what you came up with, I guess. Yeah, uh, the way that you would write it. I'm trying to think. Uh, the most most of the characters, you know, uh, I can't really say what it, because they're a different medium and they're yeah. a different audience. So yeah, I'm uh, utterly surprised that they're doing Brother Blood in any version. Now the uh, the one uh, whether it's the one that was on Arrow or the one now, uh, visually based on what I've seen of the new version of Brother Blood, the new character, it looks pretty close to what uh, George and I did. Um, yeah. yeah. Did you get both parts in, Tommy? That's good. Yeah, that was, I, I, it, 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 basically he's 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 saying I better not say anything about what <laughs> you want to do. <laughs> uh, 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 Pete and Rob, if y'all got questions, you need to just jump in because uh, if you don't, I, 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 unfortunately, you already asked all the questions I came up. with. Okay. Mind, so, but but as we progress, if I think of something, I'll throw I'll hand. Uh, I, 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 
I'm just happy you. to be here listening to uh, to him recount parts of his career. It's yeah. pretty pretty cool. Yeah, I probably. I, I to be honest, I probably wouldn't be listening in just as you were recording, but being being on on film, I'll be I'll I'll be really be listening and paying attention, even though I'm. I, it looks like I'm working here, which I am. I I can. I keep my ear tuned in, but if I have a question, you know, you know me, I'll pop in. All right. I, I, I'm not shy. <laughs> Sounds like Peter, Peter had a question. Yeah. yeah. So, so Marv, so you, you created a lot of characters. Do, do you feel like writers now in Marvel and DC and big publishers, do you think they're creating as many characters as you did? Or do you think they're just reusing the same characters again and again because they don't own the characters? Well, I know that I would, my preference was to create new characters because I enjoy that. I loved it when Stan and Jack and Steve did go mm. with new, new characters I'd never seen before into their books. And my feeling has always been if you use a company character, you use a character that's been around that somebody else created, you're sort of obliged to create one to, to add to the mix as well. Uh, oh. I would like to see the new creators doing that. Mm. But there's a very different situation today. And that is, there. Is, you could, when I was doing it and when Stan was doing it and Jack Kirby and everybody, um, you didn't get to own your characters. Yeah. And these days you can. So it's very, it makes total sense that a lot of creators do not want to give away a character. Mm. Yeah. In which... Uh, whether or not they're capable of creating a character or something else, but if yeah. they are, they may not want to just give it away. So uh, you can't fault them for that because we never had that option. Right. Yeah. I certainly would have, uh, you know, created more that I owned or co yeah. you know, uh, but at some point I stopped. Yeah. We, we won't talk uh, whether they're capable or not today. That's a different discussion. We'll have on a different day. <laughs> Uh, well, I, yeah. I kind of have a little follow up of, of, of Peter's thing. So I tried to look earlier today um, to try just to get a an, an actual count. I, I know you you say somewhere that you you know Stan Lee created more characters than you, but yeah, you've created a boatload of characters. Do you actually have a count of not only just ones that you created, but you know, co-created also? You know, like you can you can group those together. Do you have a count? As a writer, you are always co-creating. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you know, and and I've been very fortunate to have a lot of good good partners in comics. Um, you know, um, right from the beginning, pretty much. So uh, uh, you know, I'm happy that they were co-creator with me on that material. Hmm. Do, do you do you have a count for those? How many? No, I, I have no idea. Uh, I, I believe there's some website that has it li that lists mm. it. Even there, they are probably wrong because my credit <laughs> not be on everything. They right. only know what uh, what my credit line is. Right. Um, yeah. Huh. Yeah. We got we got the we got a, a few more uh, uh, comments here. Uh, Twitless says, "Hey, is that Mr. Kablam himself? There he there he is himself. That's Mr. Kablam." I don't know who Twitless is, Tommy. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Twitless, we don't know who you are. <laughs> uh, Vic says, Mr. Wolfman, do you have any tips for making a successful team book? Mm. Well, you can't you can't um, assume it's going to be successful because there's a million things beyond creating the characters and the world to uh, that get in the way. My view is you create interesting characters with an interesting backstory so that you could keep playing with them and develop the characters, make it, make them characters that people are going to enjoy reading about. That doesn't matter if it's a, he a hero or a villain. Mm. Uh, they have to be, they have to feel real and they have to feel right. that the readers want to see more about that character. So when you come up with a team, do you, do you have in your mind, okay, I need a strong guy. I need a flying guy. I need a. I need a smart guy. Do you have any kind of uh, thing in your mind when you're not like not, that? Uh, no, because not not in the way you're phrasing it. Because uh, 
Um, the powers that a character has, for the most part, are incidental. I care about the characters, mm. the characterizations, who they are, what they are, as people. And then I may come up with a power afterwards. That's... But I'm much more interested in what the emotional connection between all the characters are. So do you, do you, I use the Myers, do you, are you familiar with the Myers-Briggs personality type? Say that again, please. Are you familiar with the Myers-Briggs personality type? No. No. Um, I, I use the Myers-Briggs personality type for, for, for my own work. So do you have a personality uh, type for the different characters that you're shooting for? I, what I'm shooting for is uh, is something that makes that character interesting to me that I could keep, that they're not a one-note character, mm. so that they can go on for years. You think about it, uh, the Titans has gone on for, uh, since 1980, mm -hmm. so 30, 40 years, and I could still come up with individual stories for every one of those characters because I spent a lot of time, a real long time, developing the characters up front, who they are, what they care about, what they don't like, what, what they do like, uh, what they want, what they don't want, all mm -hmm. those things. Then you place them in relation to the, each one of the other characters. How do they act together? What do they think about the other characters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So you, that to me is what the book is interesting. You've seen every fight scene. If you've read a comic, you've probably, within two years, you've seen every possible fight scene. <laughs> the, the, uh, mm -hmm. the action and the superpower is miscellaneous to me. It's very minor. It's purely about who these characters are and why do I like them or why do I like to read about them if they're a bad guy. As proof of that is Deathstroke is so popular and he's not a good guy. Yeah. Uh, but he's interesting. And... He has a lot of layers to him. All those things I spent a long time working up before I submitted them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is it, so I guess here would be a follow-up question. <laughs> because you spent, uh, you said 16 years writing the Titans, was it, uh, was it difficult to give up? When, when you came to the end, was it hard to turn loose of, of these characters? Uh, no. Um, First, as I said, I, I still do them on occasion, but right. uh, not really because I, I felt that I had, at that particular point, uh, because it was pretty much nonstop, uh, I felt that I had gone as far as I could at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe take off a year or two years, three years, whatever. But you don't, if you care about these characters, you don't want to repeat yourself a million times. And if you start to find it's hard to come up with ideas, it's better to leave. Right. And yeah. Keep the character intact. Yeah. Yeah. It also, um, it also gives you time to think about the characters and then maybe come up with brand new twists to them that you hadn't thought about before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. A couple more okay. comments. I, I do have a question along these lines. Um, what what sorts of, of things did you find inspiration in to create these characters? Were you reading about reading reading things or seeing other things that inspired you that get that kind of got the juices flowing on creating the characters that you created? Uh, what was the source of some of the ideas? Is probably what is the simple way to put it. I can't tell you instantly what the source of any one character is. Generally, right. it's we're all influenced by what's by the world around us, mm -hmm. and maybe a comment that a character has made someplace or a person has made may spin itself off into something something else totally. Um, the trick of being a writer is figuring is always finding new things to say about the characters uh, to make them interesting to keep you doing that. So I don't, I can't tell you any one character how I came up with it the only two characters that, <coughs> that I could even tell you in the negative would be Blade and Deathstroke both came to me in one second wow wow 
I, huh. mean, I wasn't even thinking about them. I was walking. Uh, uh, I had just started working on Tuma Dracula, and I was walking home from the train, and suddenly the idea came to me completely in one second, everything about the character. And the same thing happened with Deathstroke. I wish it happened more, but... Uh, <laughs> it, it was, oh, it, it, so it's just you know, your subconscious was percolating these characters from from all your influences. Okay, yeah. well, that's... that. that yeah. That's yeah. That answers the question. Thank you. The, the trick again of being a professional writer or profession is seeing this random thing that's happening around you and figuring I can make that work. If you you if you can't do that, if you can't just suddenly come up with a story based on something else, and you miss the opportunity that it opens, you you lose out quite a bit. Fortunately, mm. I've had that happen to me. Mm. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. We uh, we've got a couple other comments here. Uh, comment to the pop says, "Hey yo, what's up, pops?" Um, let's see. <laughs> Oven says, "Hello, Silver Lion family. What's up, Oven?" Yeah. I, we can always count on Hyper to say like, subscribe, and share the link, folks. So uh, you guys mm. don't forget to do that. Uh, Hyper also has a question here. He says, uh, "Marv, uh, no, he says Marv has worked on so many comics." Is there something that still is a pleasant surprise for a fan to bring for an autograph? I think the stuff that I, I did very early on in my career, um, uh, unfortunately, most of them, most people don't know about them. But uh, occasionally, I'll get a copy of the Blackhawks, and because okay. uh, uh, my name is on that one, uh, so and that makes you smile. Yeah, because it. That's somebody who's gone back. If they're older, they they will usually say, "I bought this off the stand." <laughs> oh wow! And it's a really good feeling that they've been that they like that very first thing, and they continue to follow. Yeah, yeah. And they kept it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now I don't understand this one totally because um, I don't know I, I don't know the reference to this character. Unfortunately, I apologize. But Twitless says, "I want to hear about Danny Chase. What went right and what went wrong with the character, considering how he was received?" Um, well, uh, I will tell that person. I don't think anything ever went wrong with that character. I think <laughs> the characters, um, jumped on him before the character was. Uh, uh, developed uh, the very early issues with that with Danny were supposed to be he was a creepy kid he was supposed to be a jerk he was supposed to be all those things everyone reacted to him as if he was all those things mm -hmm. the whole thing was watching him grow into a real, becoming a real person he was very young he was obnoxious he was all those things they took it as a negative most of the fans because they didn't see that we were trying to develop and follow a character as they get better, as right. they realize they have to be serious. You don't start that way in life. You don't know what you're doing in life. And you learn through experience. And so I maintain that Danny was a good character because I knew where he was supposed to go. Right. Um, so the you wanted only, to show the arc. The only negative that I could say is somehow i didn't ex i didn't give them enough information to know that i was going to grow the character but they should have assumed it based on all the other characters that we did right right um that just leads me to so many other questions uh but i gotta par uh, uh put my buddy mark up here mark largent says just want to say thanks mr wolfman for decades of enjoyment i just picked up a hard cover of the night force to reread uh, oh. Thank you. Uh, Night Force is uh, probably my favorite creation. So, oh, I'm, really? I'm always happy to see that. So, so why? So, since you say this is your probably your favorite creation, why would you say that is so? Uh, it's a very complex concept, and it worked, mm -hmm. uh, and it solved a ton of problems that I was searching for. Uh, to develop and to figure out and to work with. And, you know, you can come up with uh, all these ideas and it doesn't work. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, Night Force worked. And 
even though we didn't have a, lo uh, a large readership, everyone liked it who wrote in. And mm -hmm. trust me, people are not averse to saying how much they don't like things if they write. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Netflix is always oh, yeah. a very good press, and I've loved writing it. It also features some of the most intricate plotting that I've ever done. All the stories, they're very, very, very tightly plotted. Uh, Tommy, you got a question? You just no, no, no. I'm... Okay. So, so, uh, so, one of the things you said there about fans made me think of this question. So, the internet has changed the world, of course. But how do you feel, having seen the way fans interacted with comic professionals and publishers from? When when you were young, even at, as a kid, to becoming a professional, over the time, how do you feel the internet has affected that? And maybe some pros and or cons about it, if you have those thoughts. The the thing about the good thing about the internet is it's like a comic convention, uh, right in your room. You can get a chance to speak to people. You get a chance to um, relate to other comic fans. You can ha have good discussions, all of that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Where it's bad is the people who really get off on uh, saying something nasty. Yeah. Um, I, I was, I w I was uh, the earliest of the uh, writers in New York to get a computer, and I got one with a modem specifically because I wanted to get onto CompuServe, right. which, which I just oh, no. a few months earlier. So I had a Victor 9000 computer, which was before DOS. See, that's how old wow. it was. And uh, they had special interest groups, SIGs, um, on CompuServe, including a comic book SIG. Um, and I, and I believe jo um, Walt Simonson went on there and try, and in the very beginning, people were very nice, they asked questions, they do all this stuff. And the, the idea we had was to try to um, get them involved with it. Mm -hmm. Within six months, the trolls came and started insulting within six months of the dawn of this stuff and started insulting and all the professionals at that time because i had been recommending it to people all the people who were in it quit we all just i was a member i was a member for a while uh, of the of the one in um, comics obviously. comics and animation uh, special interest group yeah i was a member yeah. of that for a while do you remember yeah. people leaving and that's because uh, there were several well, there were, uh, yeah, uh, interest groups for comics. Yeah, I, I think I may have come along after you had gone through that because I think I think all that got weeded out because it got much better later on. Although there were always some people that complained about yeah, everything. They, we, they, but we, they, yeah, later on we kind of we pushed those folks out eventually. You know, they they hmm. they think it's fun to interrupt. Yeah, the uh, the. Flow. The idea was that we had, and that why we wanted to do it, was this is such a, a wonderful hobby. We really love doing comics. We love reading them before we did them professionally. Uh -huh. Let's just have fun. This is a great thing to do. Why are you being nasty? Right. You, know, you don't have to like every comic that's out there. I certainly don't. No. Uh, but that's <laughs> opinion. And you just... You don't have to insult somebody to, say, to explain why you don't like something. Change the channel, right? Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I think part of that was the fact that it, it, what, what people don't realize, realize about going online like that is you have this level of anonymity. Yeah, there, there's you know you're not standing right next to right next to the person. Oh, they never, they never say if you're stuff. using yeah if you're using just text. You can't get visual cues as to whether this person is being is truly being nasty or whether they're just trying to be funny and being uh -huh. bad at it. That right. happens a lot. But there were or, or, there were or socially of inept. Who were just plain out. You could generally yeah, yeah, or, yeah. 
you could generally tell if a person's doing that. Also, if they get called up on it, um, it depend, uh, their answer will uh, further tell you if it's yeah. joking. Or something it will else. confirm or dispel. Yeah. yeah, almost immediately. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, I yeah, remember. Uh, I remember those days. I was part of CompuServe for a long time. There aren't many of us left. Yeah. No. <laughs> there is yeah, a Facebook page that has their has their has some of their membership, but it, it doesn't get used very often. So, but it's there's some of them are still out there. Twitter said, uh, "Thank you for the answer, uh, Marv, about uh, Danny Chase." Um, Mark said, "I was a teen when I read the original issues. I'm enjoying it even more in my 50s, and that's about the um, the Night Force." Uh, cool as heck says Gene Colan was amazing on Night Force. His page layouts were always so different. I uh, Gene was phenomenal. I love yeah. him. Yeah. And uh, Vic says you can't get slapped through a screen. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so uh, you guys, you got to jump in. I'm just going to keep asking questions. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you you had mentioned that you, you said that uh, you don't have to like everything. What what stuff are you liking right now? That's that's not your own. Of I course. I read a lot these days, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, the last book I read that uh, that I really liked was uh, Tom King's Supergirl book. Mm -hmm. Oh, really, really excellent. And Tom, in general, I like his work. Uh, I thought his Adam Strange was great as well. I'm not going to put him on the spot, but I sent him some Silverline books. I know that when he gets around to reading those, he will love those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So, uh, so let's talk about editors for a minute in comics, Marv. Uh, you were an editor. You've worked with a lot of editors. What do you think? What do you feel are some of the best strengths of an editor? Uh, and what are some of the worst strengths of an editor? And then maybe name a couple of your favorite editors. Don't name any of the worst ones, just the best ones. <laughs> um, a good editor it exists to improve your story, mm. not their story, your story. Uh right. The good editor will find where it doesn't work, where the points don't connect, where they, where you're not explaining your plot, where because you know what's supposed to happen, you fail to convey that to the other people. Uh, or a good editor will say, if you switch the scene to this, this will work a lot better, and they're right. Mm -hmm. And I've worked with a lot of good editors like Julie Schwartz and you know uh, Roy and uh, so many so many people down the line. Um, a bad editor wants to use you as a typist. They they want you to do their story. Uh, they don't really care what you're doing. I've only fortunately had one or two of those, That's and they're both, they're both out of the uh, business now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So uh, you mentioned uh, Julie Schwartz and, and uh, Roy Thomas. Uh, any any other editors that you can think of? You're like, hey, that was a that was a good editor to work oh, with. So many, you know. Um, Archie Goodwin. Um, uh, see, because I've been an editor of my own material for so much, I don't. I, I haven't had that many editors. Uh -huh. Most of them have been good. Just one or two weren't. Uh, I just can't think of them at the moment. I'm not sure. Uh, I see a question here. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm going to toss it up, but I'm not sure whether you're going to want to address this or not, Marv. Uh, Vic says, "Would you define Would you define Jim Shooter as a good or bad editor?" Yes. 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 <laughs> there, there. <laughs> we we will just leave it at that. Um, Hyper says, uh, "Hyper says, let's go to Hyper's. I like this question. He says, "Was there ever a creator you hoped to work with but didn't get to?" Uh, that's going to be my next question. Okay. Uh, that's a good question. Sorry, Pete. Most of the people that exist today, uh, in the past, I would have loved to have worked with Harvey Kurtzman wow. and Will Eisner. Mm -hmm. um, I almost worked with Will Eisner and actually turned it down. Um, and never Wait, got what? 
Why? He, for a very logical reason, he wanted me and Lindley to uh, create a magazine for him uh, and to do it, a uh, humor magazine. This was in the 70s. And he came to us to do it. And I pointed out to him that he was currently doing a magazine called uh, PS for the Army. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that was his major client and income, was uh, doing this PS magazine. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it features... It, it, it was how to put together weapons, how to put together... It was all things that s soldiers needed to learn done as a done as a comic they so, uh they made they made that at the, at the cubit school for years because i think joe joe did it for a long time and they, and was, the cubit a school clear, a beautifully done thing and i said to him you do realize this is the height of the vietnam war if we're supposed to do a human magazine like the lampoon which is what he wanted we'd be attacking the government <laughs> and you're yeah. doing, the government, he said, oh, my God, I didn't think of that. Thank you. Uh, of course, uh, the, that whole assignment could have been taken away. And it crushed me because I desperately would have loved to have done it. But um, the truth of the matter is it would have been very bad for him. Wow. So yeah. we, um, a lot of artists, I would have loved to have done a comic story with Jack. And not just, mm -hmm. I did a lot of work with Steve Ditko, so I got that there. You know, yeah. I did several comics with Steve, uh, but all I've ever done with Jack was the um, was as uh, as the editor covers yeah. and working with him on that. Uh, so many artists, I couldn't even begin to tell you. Um, uh, I wish I could have worked with, but uh, you know, there, there's just so many artists out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are. Um, and I think that I think uh, Vic, Vic actually said my bad uh, about the uh, shooter question. He uh, and I think that's the answer, Vic, the, the, to your question there. Any modern creators you would love to work with? Uh, can you think of anybody, anybody young and upcoming that uh, you're like, man, I'd like to work with that guy? The, there's, uh, I'm, I honestly feel that these days we have the best art that has ever been done in comics. Mm. Uh, so many of the artists today are really brilliant and they all have individual styles and they really look. Um, so I can't even think of all of them right now, but yeah. such, there's so many artists out today that I'd love to work with. Yeah. Um, what do you think the, I mean, you've seen, you've seen, and I asked you this briefly when I, the last time I saw you, I think in San Diego and we, we talked briefly about it. Um, but you know, one of the things in storytelling that we we've seen comic storytelling change uh, from the very compressed stories that we would get in the 1950s uh, to the to the very long decompressed stories, probably from the early early aughts and into that. What do you think? Um, do you have a preference for either of those uh, compressed, decompressed? On uh, a, a continued story or a standalone, what are some of your thoughts about those? I'm going to give you an answer that you won't like. Okay. <laughs> Essentially, whatever works best for the story. I okay. don't, you know, pure and simple. If the story requires 100 pages, that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. If it requires eight pages, that's what it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you shouldn't expand it beyond its, uh, you Actors always say you come in as late as possible and you leave as right. early as possible. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's what you told in writing movies all the time on mm -hmm. TV. And that's what I believe as well. Yeah. So, but, but how would you, how would you kind of um, work with that idea when you know you've got to write a 22 page comic? If you said, well, this story is only eight pages. What do you do? You have to think in terms of uh, what you can do in eight pages. I, I've done a bunch of those recently um, uh, for DC, you know, with, uh, and I just did a 10 page Superman. 
So you don't do a type of story that requires you to do a 20 page story. If you only have 10 pages, mm. you, have, you have to look at it and you have to say, I am creating a, pay, a story that has, that is aimed for eight pages. And I'm going to do that. Now I started in the early days uh, when DC had uh, all those books like House of Mystery and House of Secrets, the way, what they did with all the young writers was assign us one and two page stories. Wow. Huh. Oh, geez. And you still had to tell a story in one page. That's tough. And it's very tough, but it really taught you to figure out what was vital and what was really important to tell the story. So in one page, you may not, you can only have maybe one scene. And that has to be pretty much a dialogue scene or something like that. You have to think, will this, you have to come up with a story that will work in one page. And then you play it as strongly as possible in terms of writing, in terms of the characterization and plot. And you can do it. You, uh, a good line of dialogue Will help, will help explain who a character is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is it? The, uh, the, the Hemingway song, uh, the Hemingway um, story that's six words long, baby shoes for sale and never worn. Yeah. I've yeah, seen yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. it. And I, I always do one of those because they're fun. Yeah. To actually do a uh, story in six words. Yeah. They're tough. So, 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 what would you what would you say today, to, to, tomorrow, yesterday, uh, last, last year? What were you say? What would you say are if you were t talking to a class of comic writers, comic writers to be? What would you tell them are the key components of a story? What does a a comic story need to be a good story? Again, it's one of those things, once you tell people that concept of uh, what, what, what you think it needs. They'll write the formula. Then that's what they're going to do. Yeah. And that's not necessarily, that may work for one story, but it may not work for your other story. Uh, the only two things of importance are character and what your story is. And you have to make the character work in that story, and that story has to work only for that character. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, um, you know, that pretty, that's what I would tell them, but I couldn't tell them anything else because anything else, would, they will root on that. They will, they will think that's the magic pencil. Right. And uh, uh, they they have to be able to do whatever is best for the story, but they have to think in terms of, does this story require five scenes or does this story require one scene? Uh -huh. How do I make it require one scene if I only have a two page story? Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's interesting. What, what would, what would you say? And I know you say you, you don't read a lot of content today, but of the recent stuff, that you've read, um, without naming names, we're not we're not naming names. What no name names, say, name names. Go no, ahead. no, no, no name names. <laughs> what would you say is the biggest weakness in today's comic storytelling? No names. I honestly could not tell you because I don't read enough. And when what I read is, I go to a comic shop and I ask them, and they always know what I like and stuff. What <laughs> would you recommend? And they'll give me a book that they recommend. So I never, I don't read the bad ones. I don't, <laughs> I don't, have, I don't have time to read the bad ones. That's so, right. Or yeah. the comic shop is aware of that. They know what I like, and they'll say, "Give this one a try." Well, what what did have you picked up any oddball stuff that you were just like, "I'm not gonna like this," and then you picked it up and you go, "Well, this is pretty cool." You have any anything lately? Yeah, um, the Wand Division. Uh, thing that I attended uh, a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Hawkeye that, um, oh God, I can't think of this Matt, one. Matt Fraction? Yeah, Matt, Matt did. I thought that was really off the wall and really well done. Um, a lot of the stuff that um, 
Oh God, I hate when my brain goes away. Uh, no. So um, we all. Yeah. <laughs> that happens more often as you get older. It's Batman. Uh, Batman. Batman. Yeah, he he really came in and did a phenomenal job with Batman, and did the Court of Owls and all that sort of Scott stuff. Scott Snyder. Yeah, Scott. Um, really good writer. Really solid it, writer. You've mentioned a lot of Marvel DC stuff. Any you know in independent stuff or you you strictly just kind of stick with the marvel dc stuff when you go into shops i i stick with what's recommended to me and uh on my own i know that i liked um uh, boom studios did um uh, uh what was it called um something james uh lumber james hmm? lumber james lumber james i thought was really wonderful i I was uh, reviewing comics uh, for uh, um, Ross, my library, uh, and uh, I read uh, read Lumber James, and I thought it was wonderful. Uh, well, I think Silver Lion's going to send you a bunch of books, and you can check those out. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> Please don't, because I may never get a chance to look at it. Um, so, well, my, my question was going to be is, uh, who is your favorite independent publisher, and why is it Silver Lion? Why is it us? Uh, no, it's funny. I do. I do remember when I when I saw you at San Diego. I asked you if it was okay to reuse the intro that you had written for Demon's Tales, and you said, "Oh, I don't remember writing that." And I showed it to you, and you said, "Oh, yeah, okay, you can well, use it again." <laughs> I, I wrote it the first time. Might as well use it again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, guys, got questions? Uh, so I, I, I kind of got one. So with it, Roland, Roland and I were at a comic show uh, yesterday, and I was trying to. I've been looking for. I've been looking for this for for uh, a while, and I ended up finally finding a, a, a relatively. Because uh, 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 you know, when I buy when I buy back issues of stuff, I don't really need the most pristine stuff. It's just what I, I just want to read the books and stuff. So I had this when I was younger. Can you see what I've got in my hands? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I was flipping through. I finally got me a copy. I had one. I don't remember how I got this when I was younger, but I lost it somewhere along the way or it's packed in something, but I don't have it anymore. So I finally got a, a new copy and I was looking through this and guess whose name I see in it? Your name. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm aware. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what? So exactly what is a consulting editing, a consulting editor? Because you are listed uh, amongst uh, 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 several. So do you remember doing anything? What would you, what's your involvement with this? I'm just bringing it up because it's just topical because I picked it up and I was flipping through it a while ago and I'm like, oh, we're going to talk to Marv later. Let me bring this up to him and see what he has to say about it. Because I was the editor at Marvel. Um, uh. Not, not on that specifically. Uh, I was just available if they had any questions. That's okay. Uh, they didn't need to. Jerry Conway, who wrote that, had written Superman and Spider-Man for a long periods of time, so he just certainly didn't need any of that. But the companies wanted uh, consulting editors on both sides. Gotcha, and, gotcha, gotcha, uh, gotcha. We were available. Interesting. Okay, uh, that was my question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Vic, Vic's got another question here. I like this one here. Uh, he says, anything from the black and white explosion in the 1980s that you have fond memories of? Other than that's, cat and mouse, of course. That's a strange question. Um, <laughs> because it's, first of all, it's so long ago. and I, 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 I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure, but I just don't have, uh, I, I just can't think of them. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Yeah, it's so long ago I can't remember. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so if you were to, um, if you were to talk to, uh, what did he say here? <laughs> Vic says, "Sorry, I'm a nerd." <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, if you were to uh, talk to a, a, a group of young creators today and they're like, hey, we want to we want to make comics. What would be maybe your top five things to tell them they need to do? They need to read. Is that what you're asking? Uh, no, not necessarily what they need to, to read, but what do they need to do? I mean, reading, I, I, I would assume, would be one of them. But what would you say they need to do in order to to work in the industry? Oh, you're talking about breaking into the industry, right? Um, okay. If the first thing is, if you're a writer, think of yourself as a writer and not a comic book writer, mm. uh, because you should be able to write everything. You should be at least give it a try to write everything. Um, what you need to do is under, is take s comics that you really love and analyze them. Why do you love it? Why? What? Are, what are these books? What is the story? How does? How is it broken down? How do they do it? So that you start understanding the building blocks of a story. If you're an artist, you draw story. Not, don't do um, pinups. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Uh, because you could spend a year <laughs> and uh, you could spend all this time, but it doesn't tell you if you, uh, it doesn't tell an editor if you can tell a good story. Right. Uh, you may get a cover uh, from from those, but if you want to do the insides as, a, as an artist, show them that you can tell a story visually, that the scenes flow into each other that uh, the movement makes sense. Look at the best stories and see why, what they've done to understand it, but don't copy it. Mm -hmm. Just use it as a teaching tool. Um, other than that is find people who give you honest criticism. Yeah, yeah, um, that's tough. It's very tough because family won't. <laughs> yeah. Well, they, 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 they care about you. They love you. They whatever, and they don't want to hurt you if they don't like the story. So they won't give right. you the correct thing. You need to find people who will give you correct ones. And if you don't like their answer, figure out why. Figure out if they are, um, uh, if they're correct or not. Uh, very often they will be, because if several people say. Uh, say the same, have the same criticism, it's probably true. Mm. Um, so. do, do you have anyone in your circle uh, today that when you write something, you send it to them and say, hey, I need some feedback? Uh, I have people who, if I wanted to do that, but generally I could figure it out on my own. Um, uh, I I can figure out where it's gone where it's gone wrong or something. That doesn't mean I'll come up with the correct answer, but uh, I guess if I really had a problem, I certainly do have friends who in the, or professional writers who would who I could call and say something. But I just never have. All right, all right. Do do any of those do any of them call on you for uh, for help sometimes? Once, twice, but again, most of us can conf figure some of that stuff out. If you've yeah. seen me, if you've been in it for a while, you have an understanding of what works and what doesn't. Right. You may not solve it, but you'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And, and there's a difference there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pete, did you have another question? I saw you looking like you had a question. Um, I was just saying what... What's what's next for, for Marv? What what's what are you doing now? What are you doing next? Um, I can't actually tell you. Oh, <laughs> oh right. that figures. Oh, that's good. Well, are, can you say are you are you working on comic book stuff? Or are you work well comic book? Are you working on print stuff? Or are you working on a, a TV a, a movie? I'm doing so, both. Um, okay. I'm doing TV. I'm doing uh, video game writing, which I've been doing uh, for 
10 years and uh, also comics. Mm, okay. okay, cool. cool. Oh, that would be Very great good. to see a new book from you. Well, I know that... Um, the next I think that out is uh, I have a Superman story in November coming out. So that's oh, the next great. coming out. Ooh. Cool, cool. Well, I know the last time um, we spoke in person, you were working on Ep Epic Mickey, I think, at the time. Epic Mickey? Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. So yeah. how did you how did you make the shift? How and maybe why and how did you make the shift from comics to animation or, or video games, I should say? First of all, I've never just been a comic book writer. Uh as far back as the early 70s, I wrote novels. So, okay. um, you know, uh, as I say, my belief is that you're a writer. My favorite writing is comics, but I'm a writer who does comics. I've done TV, I've done animation, I've done uh, animated movies. Uh, I've done all sorts of things. So it's not, and I'm a, uh, I like video games. I've always been a video game fit person. And there was a chance to do one, to work with somebody on it, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, really got to like it. The Epic Mickey, I was the editor of Disney Adventures magazine for a while and loved writing Mickey Mouse. Uh, it sounds strange, but the comics are really solid, um, and the character's a really good character. So not only did I understand Mickey, because they liked what I did in the comics, but... I had already written video games, so it made sense to sort of put them together. So, do you play any video games? All the time. What do you All What do you, What do you play? What What system? What What's your favorite console right now? Right now, it's the um, uh, Oculus. Oh, 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 all right, you're, you're getting oh, immersive. Wow. Cool. And I'm currently playing a game called uh, Moss Two. Uh, Morse One was wonderful, and now I'm in uh, Morse Two. What? Now, what kind of game is that? It's um, it's a cert it's a VR game first of all. Okay. Um, Ooh. It's uh, as all the Oculus stuff is. Um, it's a uh, it's a search game, and you have to figure out the strategy of how to get your character to go through do the search for something. It's because it's a, again uh, Oculus. It's it's really a wonderful tool to see to see the world in a different way because you're actually walking through a three dimensional. Yeah. yeah, neat. Um, Hyper's got a couple of <laughs> Hyper says Marvel's working on a new Sergeant Rock series. I wish. No, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> they hadn't told you about it. Hyper is a big Sergeant Rock fan, so that that would be uh, something he would like. Uh, sorry, Hyper, you tried, man. Uh, it got, uh, Vic said uh, NDA there. Uh, Hyper's got a question here. It says, was there a big pay difference in editor, editor in chief, or writer? Um, I think there was with editor in chief. Uh, they're all different because writers are paid by the page. Mm hmm. An editor is paid by the job. Um, editor in chief is paid by uh, any any number of uh, uh, circumstances. Uh, again, I'm not on the business side of it, and I was I left Marvel because I didn't want to be on the business side of it. Right, so. right. Yeah. Now you were at Marvel before they were paying royalties, right? Yes. So were you still there when the royalty system was was instigated or had you left and then came back? No, I never I left and did not come back. Never came back. Have you not done anything for Marvel since then? I did a bullseye story. And that's it? But not really. Most wow. of the book is for DC or other companies. Wow. Hmm. Wow. I, had, I don't that, guess I, I hadn't given that much thought, but that yeah. I can't I, think of anything. Wow. Yeah. So kind of kind of once you said bye, you said bye. Excuse me? We I, I said so kind of once you said bye, you said bye. Yeah, but you never know. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> well, many of the editors uh at 
DC Today were editors at Marvel in the 90s. Uh, everybody moves back and forth. Yeah. Um, but again, I've done so many different things outside of comics as well that, um, uh, you know, I, I don't think about any one company that much because I'm writing for so many different companies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know that uh, Hyper might have this question and he's done, I'm going to ask it. So how did your relationship with Malibu come about in the, the early nineties and, and how did uh, the whole Bravira thing happen with you? Um, Malibu was a couple of uh, miles, just a few miles from where I lived. Um, and during the uh, big earthquake that we had, uh, we had to move out of our house. And while, while repairs were being done, and Dave Olbrook said, if you need a space to work, uh, because I was going to be in just as uh, my wife and I in just a small um small apartment, uh, uh, they had room for me up at Malibu. And I said, fine, that's great, because I'd have a computer, or I'd have all this, it would be would be really nice. And at some point they said, would you be interested in doing one of these creator-owned books uh, that reviewer was going to do, which was mm -hmm. the offshoot of uh, Malibu. And I said, yeah, and I did Man Called Axe for them. Mm -hmm. And then Marvel bought it. Uh, Malibu, and I moved to a man called Axe over to DC and uh, did that. But that was during the time when nothing was selling well. So the book yeah. lasted, a, you know, uh, got good reviews, but the book lasted a very short time. Yeah, yeah, it did. And I, I still remember, I don't know if you ever recall it, but uh, we had all kind of questions at Malibu about is it Axe or is it A10? And of course, that was part of the story, right? Yeah, it's yeah. it was purposely vague because I wanted people to think it was AX, AX, uh, but the AX stood was the A Roman numeral X, which would have been Assassin Ten. Mm. Ah, and that's what AX stood for. Yeah, um, uh, I remember that. Uh, all right, so Vic. Vic's got the, the, the kind of the similar question. Oh, look at that. Hi Hyper says, uh, I sure miss Malibu. Uh, well, well, Hyper, we're trying Don't to give we you all? The, we're trying to give you the spirit of Malibu with Silverline. Um, and then he says, Marv, what were your thoughts on the Malibu titles? Do you remember any of them? Yeah, they were fine. Uh, you had good writers on them. Mm -hmm. Um, I did, I did some Ultra Force. Mm -hmm. for Hank uh, Canals, uh, but I didn't really do anything for Malibu. I did most of my stuff for uh, Bufira. Bufira, yeah. Now, did you write the Did you write the Ultra Four stories that uh, were were drawn by George Perez? I think so. I think so too. Yeah, because he he only drew he only drew. Oh, gee, I don't remember how many he drew four, four, five, six, something like that. Um, I think the launch. The, it was the a launch, launch title. Uh -huh. It was yeah. frankly so, such a long time ago that I don't really recall a lot of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vic says, uh, some of my first comics from Malibu, which is weird considering my age. <laughs> uh, and, and that's what brought you to Silverline, isn't it, uh, Vic? Uh, all the Malibu connections. Um, well, it, it wasn't unusual for you to be in an office nearby because of the, the the New York thing, but um was it unusual because it was Malibu and wasn't uh Marvel or DC? No. Uh no. No, they were very nice. They uh offered me a space and uh, I was very happy to have it. Oh here we go. I I knew somebody would, would chime in and said uh, I think uh whoops I think Marv did Ultra Force issues eight and nine. Thank you, James. Um, I knew some somebody would uh, would remember that. Um, uh, we got some we got some great some fans know what they're talking about. Yep, they're they, really heavily into this stuff. They know exactly what it is. Um, yeah, that's great. So, so Mark, probably probably the last question here. Um, what 
character or characters have you not written? Have would you I like? Have? have you not written that you would like to write? Can you think of any? I I enjoy every time I get a chance to write Superman. Uh, he's still oh, my favorite wow. as a writer. Uh, if I wrote Marvel, it would be Spider Man. Spider Man. Uh, I really love. Those are my two favorites. My favorite DC is uh, Superman. My favorite Marvel is uh, Spider Man. Wow. Um, uh, there are always books. You know, I'd love to have written um, Dead Man. Um, okay. And I like doing uh, all different types of stuff, but um, can't think at the moment. The only thing I haven't done that I would like is Popeye. I like to do one Popeye story. Okay, in the, cool. In the style of the comic strip, not not, not anything else. Right. Yeah. Um, well, we're in good good company because uh, 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 Spider Man is uh, my favorite Marvel character, Tommy's favorite Marvel Marvel character, and Pete's favorite Marvel character. I'm not sure about Rob. Rob, who's your favorite uh, Marvel character? Uh, it's a toss up between Captain America and Iron Man. Captain America and Iron Man. So yeah, they're they're in a very tight tie. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so we, we all uh, are, are big fans of Spider-Man here as well. So yeah, uh, I, I love Spider-Man too, but I, I'm sorry. If you're asking favorites, those I did. Are- yeah, I, did. Favorite. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like Spider-Man. I, especially the early Ditko stuff was just amazing. Yeah. So yeah. Um, although the later stuff during Marv's run through there were, there were some amazing things being done then as well. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, Marv, if you could take over Marvel today, <laughs> what some of, yeah. no, no, no names. If you could take over Marvel today, what are some of the first things that you would do as editor in chief? Who would you fire? <laughs> no like names. It. No names. <laughs> that would require me knowing what Marvel's doing. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't read them, so I don't see. DC sends me the books on a, <laughs> uh, on a comp copy list, right? Uh, so I read them, and that's why I know the DC stuff so well. Uh, and beyond my still working for them, uh, I never see the Marvel books unless uh, my store recommends it. Wow. Okay. So I have no view. No view. Okay. Well, all right. Well, let me let me let me turn that to a because you know you probably heard it uh, one of the things that you hear from dc fans uh complain a lot is the constant the seemingly constant reboots at dc so again no names but if you could take the helm of dc comics today what's some of the first things that you would do as editor-in-chief it's you know, so much of it is um, you have to, those are the type of things you have to think about mm-hmm. uh, seriously uh, if you were going to do something like that. I don't know. Uh, Not sure. What you do because when I read the books, I don't read it for that uh, thing. Also, there are a million reasons why certain decisions are made that you don't know why. Right. And you blame some, you blame the editor when it's the business guys or when it's you know, something like yeah. that. So I would, I would always want to really sit down and make sure all the characters work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when I did Titans with George, uh, we came in at a time and just ignored pretty much what DC was doing and just did what we felt we truly believed in. Mm-hmm. And it worked on the Titans. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Uh, it's it's I think you have to always look forward and not back so I don't get too uh, nostalgia nostalgic about stuff yeah. you know, uh, when I did Crisis on Infinite Earths I knew it was going to change the entire DC universe mm-hmm. uh, but if we didn't do what we did they may not have been a DC universe because the sales were so poor and right. Crisis did a great job of getting the sales up there and uh, uh, it worked well. So you have to always look ahead, but at the same time, you have to be, uh, you have to be truthful to the characters. Right. 
Uh, and it, that's a hard road to walk because you're trying to do two very different type of things all at the same time. Take it into new worlds, but not uh, anger people by ignoring everything that had been. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I know we've talked about crisis a little bit uh, before, and and I was a Marvel zombie as a as a kid, and I read um, I read Titans because my wife liked Titans, so I read Titans. That's the only DC book I read until Crisis, and then when when crisis happened because i wasn't a i wasn't a multiverse fan right and dc kind of had the multiverse thing going on before multiverse was was so popular and so when crisis happened i'm like this is the opportunity for me to jump on yeah. in 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 the in the one continuity and i bought many 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 of the dc titles uh after crisis well, that's, that's why we did Crisis, was to get the people who hadn't looked at DC to suddenly look at it and realize how, that DC had great stuff. Yeah, yeah. Both um, companies do. I mean, that's, that's, that's something that, as a fan, you, you may argue, but the fact of the matter is both DC and Marvel and many of the other companies as well all have really good stuff out there. Mm -hmm. Every yeah. book. Yeah, but yeah. So uh, plenty of, of, of good, really good books, no matter which company produces it. Yeah, yeah. Well, we all we, we like to say on here, this is a great time for uh, to be making independent comics because um, it's so easy today for uh, to have your comic made. It's a lot easier today than it was, you know, what with digital printing. It was it's a lot easier to get it done than yeah. you know twenty years ago, thirty years ago. So, well, all right, you guys got anything? Uh, my clock has just seemed to zoom right along, and, and we're, we're at well, the end of our... I was just going to ask one thing. What, what are you thinking, and, and not to go on too much about it, what what are you thinking about these these uh, latest batch of the movies, the, the superhero movies? Do, do we have too many of them coming out? Is there enough? Should we pull back on it a little bit? What do you, what do you, what's your thought about the movies that are coming out? Or that have come out, or all the uh, the 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 uh, the Disney Plus uh, versions of all that. Look, I see a grin on a, a smirk on your face. It's like he's like, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, yeah, are you watching any of that stuff? Let me ask. Let me turn your question around. Uh oh, no, no. I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> okay. Um, are there enough top cop TV shows out there? Should we stop having cop TV shows? <laughs> no. There you no, go. Why is, why I, I, I agree. I, think I, I love the fact that there's so much stuff. I just want your opinion. Why yeah. are comic book TV shows treated differently than cop shows? Mm -hmm. As long as they're good, that's the right. only thing. They're written well, good characters, uh, uh, well thought out storylines. Yeah, why not? Who cares? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So I think it's a it's it's incorrect to say are there too many of them. Yeah. Uh, the question to ask is how many of them are good, how many mm -hmm. of them are great, how many of them do you really want to read? Right. Yeah. 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 How many? How many were worth worth seeing? So. Uh, I, like right, your, I like your answer. I like your answer. Yeah, that's good. good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime we can turn anything around on Tommy, Marv, we take that opportunity. Oh, come on, quit picking on me. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, so so the last thing we're going to do, Marv, uh, where can people find you uh, on the internet and maybe where are you going to be appearing in person next? Uh, I'm not doing any cons at the moment uh, okay. because of COVID. Okay. Um, yeah. And... Uh, uh, you can find me on Facebook, um, Marv Wolfman, and Twitter, the same thing. Okay. All right. And um, so hang out for just a few minutes. Uh, after we end the broadcast, we'll chat with you just a little bit at the end of the, at the, end of the show. A uh, couple real quick, uh, real quick uh, comments here. Uh, Vic says, this was way too quick. We agree, Vic. Uh, I, 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 will, I will make this deal with you, Vic. I'll, after, I'll wait a couple of weeks. And then I'll send Marv another email and ask him if he wants to come back sometime. 
Um, <laughs> Hyper says, I want to thank Marv for all the enjoyment he has given me throughout the years. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Tommy striking a nerve. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, so, uh, this is like last week, I was getting people yeah. mad at me. Tommy, where can folks find you on the interwebs? Just go on to the Googles and type in Foramonte, F-L-O-R-I-M-O-N-T-E. I'm mostly on Facebook, but you'll find me here and there and, and here on Sunday. That's right. Yep, and, yep. Uh, and, then, and then sometimes on the Wednesday show when I'm trying to drive around in the middle of the night. Yeah, trying he comes to and interrupts it. us every now and then. Right. right. I'm, out <laughs> running, I'm out running the police when I'm on my thing, so don't leave. <laughs> Twitless says, thank you for all the interesting and inf inf informative conversation. I appreciate Mar for sharing his, from his wealth of experience. Thank you, Twitless. Yeah, for absolutely. Hanging out with uh, Phil Leon said, where does the time go? And great show. Thank you, Phil, for hanging out with us. Uh, Retro Maniac James says, thank you uh, for everyone in the chat, through the chat. Um, Vic says, Tommy, I tried the Dollar Tree comics, and it was interesting to say the least. So, Really? I, I, I didn't have a chance. We talked about that a couple of weeks ago. I hadn't had a chance. My wife has been by there, and she, she said that she couldn't find any. So, oh, well. <laughs> uh, Pete, what about you? Where can, where can folks find you on the interwebs? On the Google, you type in Peter Clinton Art, and um, I'm sure and I there you are. There you like are, right? the top. Where, like where's your hat today, Pete? It, um, no, because I can't get into the studio at the moment, so all my hat and um, my studio is locked away. Uh, you still draw it, oh, right? right? Locked yeah. away. Yeah, yeah. There did you, you get, go. That's what I want to see. Did you get <laughs> kicked out of it? You got I'm kicked out of the house? A cover for Steam Patriots, and I've spent the better part of today drawing a um. Oh boy, punky cart. A boiler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rob, what about you? Where can folks find you on the interwebs? Okay, well, it, it, you can find me every week on the Wednesday Ram. Yep. Except for this week, I'm unfortunately going to be out, out of town and away from any. I'm, I might be able to pop in for a minute or two. It'll mm. depend on what's going on there, but. Uh, on the internet, robmdavis.com is a link to just about everything I do. Another one is airship27hanger.com. That's the uh, that's the publishing business I have with Ron Fortier uh, right. that uh, we do the pulp recreation uh, books with. But uh, yeah, if you if you go to robmdavis.com, that has my bio and it has a few links there to other thing other places to reach me. I, that, yeah. that, that should encourage me to actually go over and refresh that website. You probably need <laughs> right? some links fixed. But there you yeah, go. That's where they can find me. And you can find me I, on all the social places. Look for uh, Roland Man. I think it's Man Roland on Twitter. Uh, Marv, hang on until after the bumper. We're going to chat a little bit. But until next time, you guys remember what we do. We say, make my silver line. Good night, everyone. Hey, I'm Pat Broderick make mine silver line.